You know, Craig, I've been pretty fascinated with our uh, science-focused essay this week as I read what you had written, and I'm curious to ask you a few questions. Uh, didn't we think not too long ago that that we were going to have infectious disease on the run, if not eliminated? What what happened? Well, it was, I think the big aspect of this was the all the medical advances that occurred in the 1940s and 50s, the development of vaccines, the use of antibiotics, uh, understanding and implementing rather cheap uh, public health and sanitation practices suddenly eliminated a lot of diseases that uh, that were so common, like measles and smallpox even, and these kinds of things. And then uh, people realized, hey, we've got the tools now to treat, effectively treat, and get rid of, uh, of these infectious diseases. And so I think we've got a false sense of security right then. And and uh, never bore fruit. We had success. I mean, in the 1960s, we got the Surgeon General of the United States stand up and say the time of infectious disease is over. We have all the tools to conquer it. Wow. So I guess at the bottom is emerging disease. What do we mean by emerging disease anyway? I mean, give us a clear definition and a re-emerging disease. What do we mean by those terms? Uh, emerging disease is one that hasn't been found in the human population. At least we don't have a record of it. And uh, there are a lot of good examples. Uh, the great example, the one that really turned the medical and public health uh, arena on their head was HIV in the early 1980s. Here was a disease that, uh, that we'd never heard of, that was devastating, that uh, initially had a fatality rate of near 100%, uh, was transmitted by a variety of social behavioral means it was almost impossible to stop and all of a sudden they said wow here's something brand new has cropped up that could become pandemic in the world and since that time we've had things like uh, Ebola which we just had a big incident of in in Africa but it's been ongoing since the 1970s uh, in the United States for example West Nile virus hantavirus and so these are diseases that are uh, entering from the animal population into the human population sometimes with great success Re-emerging diseases are diseases that we thought we had under control. A classic example is tuberculosis. Uh, tuberculosis probably, uh, once uh, smallpox was under control, has probably been the leading killer in the world uh, since that time. Uh, we have a vaccine, uh, we had pretty effective drugs, and then all of a sudden, uh, through our own kind of neglect or not paying attention, we get a multiple drug-resistant strain of tuberculosis that no antibiotic will affect. Cholera is another good example of this. And so these are diseases that we thought we had under control that suddenly reemerge for a variety of reasons. Now, it's my impression that just the opposite to what the Surgeon General predicted has happened. We seem to have an acceleration of uh, infectious diseases. Why is that happening? What are, what are the agents that are accelerating, or is that kind of a misimpression? No, I think you're right on, Gene, and uh, there are a number of factors, and number one on the list has got to be the uh, massive population growth of humans, particularly in areas where uh, public health and sanitation is very minimal. Uh, you layer on top of that the fact that diseases can get around uh, on airplanes. Uh, you can get on the other side of the continent, you know, in a, in really in less than a day, you can have somebody infected with the disease and uh, get over there. The classic example of that, of course, is SARS. Uh, one infected individual leaves China, eventually gets to Toronto, and a couple of days later, you've got an outbreak of, of SARS in Toronto. Another factor is the development of, of something we don't see much in the United States, but it's happening in a lot of places in the world, these uh, kind of de facto megacities, places that are just... Uh, get millions of people coming out of uh, rural areas into urban areas looking for jobs, uh, better themselves. And these mega cities in Asia and Africa and other places have no sanitation structure, no public health uh, umbrella like we have here, and they're rampant with poverty. And, and they're just a perfect uh, breeding ground, a place for emerging diseases to come from. So there really is an avalanche of disease in the world today, and it's... Uh very serious. Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, not only do we have this increasing population, but they're pushing into areas where we've had a very sparse population. So we're coming in contact with animals and insect vectors and, and, and these disease agents that we've had very minimal contact with before. So, yeah, yeah, things so, are accelerating, I think. 
So it's kind of frightening, Craig. What does the future hold? Uh, what 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 do you think we're going to see down the road? I mean, what prognostication can you make about all this? Well, I think a couple of things. One, uh, you know, we we got so confident in ourselves and our capacity in the 1960s and 1970s that we entered a I think an era of benign neglect. Quit developing antibiotics. Quit working so hard on vaccines. Cut back on a lot of public health programs. And we're seeing the, the fruits of that right now. And what we need to do is change our strategy. We need uh, to develop and maintain rapid response teams. You can see that when the outbreak occurred in uh, West Africa with Ebola, our response was really pretty slow at the time. We need to cultivate and develop that so when there is an outbreak, we can immediately go in there and, and seize control of the situation. There's also a need to develop new treatments. So we need to be out there actively looking for drugs, developing vaccines, utilizing our surveillance system to try and figure out what the next thing might be. Most epidemiologists, most uh, medical folks uh, believe, and I believe that uh, sitting out there somewhere is the next HIV. Sitting out there somewhere is the next 1918, 19 yeah. influenza pandemic. It's just a matter of time. And the only way that we'll be uh, able to survive that is if we have an effective response that we're working on right now. Well, I hope we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do I, because this is a, this is a, is going to be inescapable. These things are continue to come at us. It's just the nature of the Chuck Darwin world we live in. They're going to fill the niches that we supply for them.